Hello, my name is Michael McCarthy, and in this video we're going to take a look at Zookeeper. Zookeeper is a scene management system for 3DS Max. It can handle thousands of objects via its powerful tree views and layer views, and you can also view and edit any objects in 3DS Max via its schematic views. Let's just create a sphere here, and I'm going to create a camera as well, and we'll go into Zookeeper. So you can see all of our objects represented here. We have our layers view as well as our palettes where you can create any of these objects, materials, or controllers right from within Zookeeper as well. Today we're going to focus on taking a quick look at some of the capabilities of Schematic, uh, but we surely won't be able to touch on all of them because it's a very powerful system. So I'm going to drag these guys over and you'll see we'll get our two nodes in our Schematic view. I can take them and rename them. I'll just select the Geosphere double click, name it ball. These are the scene nodes for our objects and I can also drag out their object properties and you can see each one has uh, its properties so we can take a look and adjust the radius of our sphere as well as the FOV of our camera and you know things like tessellation of the object and stuff like that. Some of these UI elements I don't need right now so I'm just going to unpin them and then they'll kind of pop out as I need them. And that'll give me a little bit more room here to work in the schematic. You see we have a little navigator here so I'm going to just minimize that. Take a look at any of these inputs. So we can take any one of these inputs and add any controller that we like to them. So I'm going to go and add a noise float and you'll see that this is using very small values so I'm just going to double click on that and I'll make it greater than zero and a radius of 20 and now we should be able to see that object using the noise controller for that. Uh, if we don't want this anymore I can just right click here and remove it and then delete that node. If I want to create a wire between the two parameters of an object I can easily just drag one into the other. So let's say I want the FOV to affect something like the segments. I'll just drag it in, ask it to make a one-way wire, and then I can drag out those controllers. And I can see I have my wire here with its slave controller, which is the FOV Bezier controller. So now what I have is as I get closer to the object with the FOV, the segments actually go down. And as I get far, further away, the segments go up. And this is the inverse of what I actually want. So I'll go into our wire parameters and just quickly adjust the expression for that and I'll times that by 10 just so I can get a few more segments out of this and when I scrub this in as I get closer as we can see here the object has more segments and as we go further away uh, we get less and less segments there. So you can adjust things like that. Now the nice part about Zookeeper is it doesn't just work with objects or cameras or lights or effects. You can work with anything that you want. So not just you know schematic material editor but basically an entire scene management system. So we can do materials so we'll add in our material here and I'm just going to remove those nodes right now to clear up our view and for this material I'll add in a uh, basic diffuse map. Now I can just drag this out and it will give me a list of all the maps but Zookeeper has some great other options for adding nodes into the view. I'm just going to uh, control right click and it's going to bring in my type in box and I'm looking for a noise map. So I'm just going to type in noise and everything that's in the scene that is noise is going to have here. So you see I have my noise uh, modifiers as well as a noise map as well as noise float controllers and noise position controllers. So I'm just going to grab that map and drag it in here and then I can easily pipe that into my bump and from here I can go in and adjust things like the coordinates for the blur and right now I think I'd like to go into parameters and just bring that noise size way down. There we go and I'll adjust that bump or the bubble here to about 100 so that we have something that's really really bumpy. Now I can interact with all the other nodes in the scene by using controllers and wires and anything else that is available to you in Mac. So what I'll do is I'll grab this FOV target and I'm going to just pipe that into the blur of this map. Now you can see that as we get further away from that object it will blur the object more and as we get closer it's blurring it almost none. Okay, And actually we need to set our blur offset 
So I'll set the blur offset to maybe that 0.3 and we'll bring that FOV back here. None of these things are exclusively only adjustable here in the viewport. So, um, you know, if I just double click on my camera node, it'll load it up in here and I can, you know, all this stuff is standard 3ds max stuff. So you can adjust that anywhere here. So as we get, you know, closer there, we'll even just minimize zookeeper and render that out. We have, you know, our nice setup for our bump. And as we get further away, um, we have less segments that we have to deal with. The bump is a little bit blurred and that can definitely help in your rendering pipeline if you have uh, strong AA. If you have a real noisy bump on something that's very far away, um, you may want to blur it out as it gets further away and that will help the AA engine of whatever uh, ray tracer you happen to be using. I'm just going to add one more piece and when you have many, many objects in your scene, you may want to uh, break them down. So maybe I just want to take all these materials with me and just edit the materials for this object. I can easily select both of these guys and just drag them up to a new tab and these are still linked to all the same objects, but we'll just uh, right click and we'll name this uh, ball mats. Okay, and this can just be the material. So when I go in here, I can do some things and have a nice cleaner quick view. I'm just going to uh, use another option of the schematic view, which is to insert a node and I'll go and grab something like a fall off node. So we have that basic fall off going on. And as we go off to the sides, we don't get as much of that bump and I can go in here go into fall off parameters and I can swap those uh, maps out or you know I can make it a Fresnel or you know a shadow light type scenario and get something like that. So that's a little bit about the schematic part of a zookeeper. We'll be taking a look at some of the larger scene management options a little bit later.